I'm Shannon and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create a business out of reselling free furniture. First I'm going to pull up my notes just because I have a lot of stuff and I don't want to forget anything. So I've got my notes here, my tea. So let's get started. First about me, I have been I resold free furniture for about two years, and within those two years, I've really been able to figure out the kinks, really make it a really efficient process, and to really maximize profit through it. So I don't really do it anymore, though, just because I'm more focusing on my YouTube channel and my other job now. I'm more passionate about those things. I did really enjoy reselling furniture. I just, I don't really need to do it anymore, I guess. I'm more passionate about doing this. When I did resell furniture, I didn't have another job, so it was my only source of income and I was able to completely live off of that. So you can make a lot of money on it. And if I can do it, you can do it. So I guess let's start. So first I'm gonna go over the things that you need to do this. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, you wanna go upstairs? Okay, so the things that you need to do this. First thing, a car. You really need a car. Unless you're gonna walk furniture back to your house or you live next to a junkyard or something. I don't know. You need a car. Um, the bigger car you have, the better. If you have a truck, that is awesome. You can actually make a lot more money with a truck. But I don't have a truck. I have a smaller SUV, I have a RAV4, and a lot does fit into it. But if you have a smaller car, that's okay. You're just more limited to smaller items like maybe a coffee table or side tables or a chair but it's still doable next thing you need is storage a place where you can store your stuff and where you can fix it up if you are going to fix it up so this is my garage slash workshop and i store like behind the camera there's some old pieces of furniture i am very lucky that i have this big garage to store stuff you don't need this much space but honestly the more space you have the more stuff you can hold, the more stuff you can have posted and for sale, and the more things you have for sale, the more you can actually make money. So, bigger space is better, but it's okay if you have a small space. One thing that would be helpful is if you have another person that could help you, if you do need it, that would be useful. Sometimes I ask my boyfriend, like if we're picking up a couch, I would ask him for help. I definitely can't get a couch into my car by myself. So that would be helpful, but for the most part, I just did it all by myself. So, and I'm a small, I'm like 5'4", so if I can do it, you can do it. And you need time, just time to do this entire process. One thing that you don't need is experience. My experience with fixing up furniture really wasn't that great when I started. And everything you don't know, you can just watch a YouTube video and learn. Step one is intake. Finding furniture. All of the apps that I use, I keep in this one folder, and this is like my reselling apps. So there's OfferUp, LetGo, Nextdoor, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist. At least these are the ones that I know. Comment if there's other ones that I haven't heard of. But for these ones, honestly, Craigslist, I don't even waste my time with. The interface is horrible, and you have to email them or text them. And if you text them, you don't even remember what the item was. And if email, it would by the time I respond, the item is gone or someone's not interested anymore. So I don't even waste my time with Craigslist. My favorite apps for selling are different than my favorite apps for, for intake. One of my favorite apps for intake is Nextdoor because it's an older crowd. If you haven't heard of Nextdoor, it's like mainly, it's like a next door neighbor app, like, oh, a dog is lost in the neighborhood or my grandma with dementia has gone missing type of app, but they also sell stuff too. And so here you go free and for sale and they have a free section and you click on free and then you click furniture and then you can see all of the stuff that they have. People don't sell on here as much. So I do use the other apps more, but occasionally you do find gems on here. I found like one time a very modern, beautiful, like brand new couch that I ended up selling for $300. So you can find gems on here, although they're, isn't as much people selling stuff on here as compared to the, the other apps. And honestly, I don't really even post on this anymore just because because it is a older crowd. Older people tend to have more money and don't really end up buying resold furniture anyway. So next app, OfferUp. I think OfferUp is actually my favorite, but also this is because of my area. I live in San Diego and a lot of people use OfferUp in San Diego. It might be different in your area, but I like OfferUp. So 
we're gonna click furniture and then offer up doesn't have like a free button but you just go to the price and you do max zero and then you can see everything that you got and ooh, that's actually really nice see that's something that that drawer i could easily fix i could just glue it back up and i could sell this if i can fit this into my car i really would need help lifting this but this i could minimum make a hundred dollars off of this so and then you just ask is this still available honestly it's beautiful maybe even for my house should i get it wow I mean, there's some there's some pretty good stuff okay sorry i'm getting too distracted but <laughs> so pretty much all of the apps people post a lot of free stuff actually the whole reason i'm doing this video is because one of my best friends from high school um told me she was reselling furniture and she didn't even know that there you could look up free furniture that people post free furniture on all of these apps so yes ton of free furniture and honestly only really looked at the free sections because it would just take so much time trying to find cheap stuff like if you look at furniture and then because also they don't post like offer up it doesn't post the price of the thing so you have to click on it find out what the price is and then be like oh it's too much and then you go back and it's just a waste of time whereas you know you can't lose money if you get free furniture you will always make a profit there's the husband items where i've just been like honestly this is going to take way too long and it's way too beat up or i just find out i can't fix it you can also get rid of it and you won't take a loss because you didn't spend money on it <laughs> so go in all the apps and look for all free free furniture um okay so my tips for for when you're actually looking for stuff the most important thing the less work i have to do the better when i just started out doing this i Pretty much I got excited about transforming stuff and being creative and really making a huge difference from the beginning to finish product but although it was fun it also was a waste of time because one it would take me like a week to fix something up like completely repaint something but it also takes up space in my garage and if I'm holding something in my garage I could fit other things or multiple things get something in and out quicker than I just fix up that one piece so my strategy has been least amount of work possible and you save money because you don't want to spend money on paint, sandpaper, and other items to fix this up. So that's my number one thing is I always look for things that I could do the least amount of work to. So items that I, I personally like are dining tables, desks, coffee tables because they do go for a lot whereas like chairs don't really go for anything. And because these items are light, I can take them apart and fit them into my car and lift them by myself if you can fit a couch in your car there's so many free couches online and i've gotten multiple free couches and sold them for like minimum 200 dollars. i mean obviously if they're not ripped to shreds but couches are great if you are able to pick couches up another thing to look for is if in the description they say i'm moving out i need it gone by this time I really recommend going. There's been multiple times where I've gone for one item and they just gave me a ton of stuff because they need to be out by a certain day and they don't know what to do with all of their stuff. So they're like, please take all my stuff. So if someone is moving, I'd say go because you end up with a lot more items than you planned to even get. And then things to avoid when looking is when people post, here's my address, come get it, I left it outside. I would get really excited by that in the beginning because normally when you are picking up a free item you have to message them and then coordinate a time and you have to wait for them to reply and this and that and so it takes a lot longer to even get the item so it's very tempting because it's like oh it's just outside i should drive and go pick it up but unless you see the post within like a half an hour most of the time by the time that you get there it's going to be gone so i found that that's actually just a waste of time another thing to avoid is if the item is outside and it's been longer than a day since they posted it it will have time to get wet and rot you don't want a rotting piece of furniture so i typically avoid that stuff unless they just put it out on to when to look when i was doing this and i made this a full business i would look every single day look at the free stuff on all of the apps every day but if you don't have time for that minimum look on the weekends the weekends is when people post people have free time on the weekend so they and they get rid of their stuff i actually would dedicate my weekends just to picking up furniture also towards the end of a month because when that's when people start moving out or the leases end and so then you get rid of furniture so the weekends and the end of a month 
towards the end of a long month. Why am I so thirsty? Okay. Anyway, next step is going to pick up your furniture. If you coordinated with the person, you're ready to pick up things that you should bring with you while you go pick up. The most important thing, if you're gonna bring anything, bring a screwdriver or a drill. I can't tell you how many times where I've gone to somewhere and I'm like, it's just one item, it fits into my car. And they've had multiple items that they're getting rid of. And if I brought this and was able to take apart stuff to fit in my car, I would have had three items instead of just one. So never <laughs> go without a drill or a screwdriver. Super important. Another thing, bring straps or rope to hold your trunk down or to hold the object down. If it doesn't fully fit in your car, you have a way to get it back instead of having to just not pick it up. Although drive safe if you do that. <sighs> okay, another thing to bring is a measuring tape. I always bring a measuring tape everywhere I go. If you're not sure something's gonna fit, just quickly measure it, measure your car, see if it'll fit. Instead of having to like lift the heavy item up, try and get it in and then find out it doesn't fit. You save so much time and physical energy. So bring a measuring tape. And the last thing I really recommend is Ziploc bags. One time I took a piece of furniture apart, put it in and then got home and realized I have no idea what I did with the screws. So since then I always bring Ziploc bags and put my hardware, my screws, whatever it comes with in here, sometimes even label it so then I know I never lose the hardware that it comes with. So next part is if you do need to fix it up, remember, try and do as little as possible, but while making it look presentable. If you spend a whole week fixing up one thing, you probably could have gotten five items in and out by the time you fix up this one object. If you are a very like detailed woodworker and love adding beautiful touches, like that's awesome. I would love to see your work, but also these apps aren't really the place to do that. If you do that, honestly, make your own website, make your own business. You don't need need these apps to sell your work. But for this clientele on these apps are typically trying to save some money. So less work, the better. So yeah, if you, you are fixing up, things that really can make a difference is changing knobs. I have a bucket of just different door, drawer pulls and knobs. Although these do really add up is buying new drawer pulls. So if you can, I would say spray paint. It's super easy to just paint a knob to make it look new and you don't have to buy a new one. It'll make something look a lot better. So I'd recommend that. If you are gonna buy paint, go with the most common colors like black or white. And if you're gonna buy stain, buy a stain that you can use for multiple projects. So next step is photographing. This is actually very important. I just use my phone. You don't need a nice camera, but try and get the lighting pretty nice but also try and make the environment nice as well. Like if I, if I had the same exact item and I put it in my garage with my nasty floor, so if I took a photo of that and posted it versus something in my house, in my decorated home, the picture up there would sell twice as fast and I could get twice the price for the same exact option. So really try and like get good photos. I actually have a plant that I just put on a lot of my objects or a little like small decor pieces that I switch out. Like I have a modern little piece of decor that I put on if I'm going for a modern look in a plant, if I'm going for a more like bohemian earthy look. So try and make it look presentable. And then next is on to posting. So definitely when you just start off, post to all of the platforms. When I'm lazy, I just post on like offer up and let go. Definitely if you're just starting out, Post to everything because what works in San Diego might not work in your area. So post to everything at first and then over time you'll really figure out which apps you like best and which work for you. The description of your post. So in the post, make sure to give all of the names. Let's say you're selling a nightstand. Some people call it a nightstand. Some people call it a bedside table. Some people call it an end table. Like there's multiple names for it. Make sure in the description you list all of that, so no matter what term someone looks up, your product will come up. Also, always put the dimensions in because that's the most commonly asked question in the message. And instead of having to pause whatever you're doing, go take the dimensions, put the message in the back. If you just have them posted from the beginning, you don't have to waste time 
messaging people th these dimensions. If it's a bigger item and you can deliver, I would offer that, but charge a small fee for it just because your time is money and in the time you're delivering something, you could have picked something else up or fixed a whole another piece of furniture up and got it ready. Offer deliver to deliver, but for a small fee. Okay, next is pricing. What do you price your items? When I started, what I would do is I would look at all of the apps. Let's say I'm selling a coffee table and I'd search a coffee table and look at all the apps and what around the prices for a coffee table. And, and then of those coffee tables, I would pick the higher end of those prices and start off at that price and then if it doesn't sell after a week i would move the price down but make sure you don't move the price down without waiting a weekend since people do people do search for furniture on the weekend i'd say wait until a weekend passes and then if you get no bites then you can lower the price and then you can just keep lowering the price until you get a hit and get it out i don't even really need to look anymore what i think i can get for an object now so over time you'll realize what you can get for your items so I just realized that I forgot to mention when you should post. Because the highest activity on these apps are on the weekend, I would always post Saturday morning or Friday night if I knew I wasn't going to wake up early on Saturday. But because the default setting on OfferUp is newest item first, you want to post your item as late as possible without missing the weekend rush. So post your items Saturday morning if you can. And even if I had items that were already posted from earlier in the week, I would actually take those down and repost them Saturday morning just so I know that it will show up on the most possible people's feed. The next thing is once someone messages you and you've agreed to a price and they're gonna come pick it up, if you don't feel comfortable with someone coming to your house to pick up a piece of furniture, you can always go to like the nearest I don't know, Starbucks or whatever is close to your house. I live in a complex, so I would just like take it outside and they wouldn't know which house I live in. Also, when people come to pick it up or you deliver it, stand your ground. I've had multiple people come and be like, oh, it's smaller than I expected or it's this or that. I don't want to give the full whatever. Honestly, I'm kind of a pushover sometimes and I'm just hate conflict so I just be like oh that's okay but like over time it's like no I posted the description the dimensions we agreed to this price I mean obviously don't be rude don't be ever mean to anyone because also you get ratings and then once you get your money you can go get more items and then you just keep doing this process over and over again so I, I think that's everything I have a ton of information on this so I'm sure I forgot some but if you have any questions comment below or you can even DM me on my Instagram and also I would love to see if you do fix stuff up tag me on Instagram or I would love to see your guys's work but yeah that's it I hope this was helpful and if I can do this you definitely can do this so that's it go make some money go start your business see you guys next time why is my mouth so dry? I'm not used to talking this much. See you next time.